Hey there, it's Mark Yegi, and uh, I've been getting a lot of requests for answering some emails, so I just figured I'd put it out uh, because I'm getting a lot of the same questions, and I figured I'd just go ahead and answer them right here, uh, make a video, and, and see what we see where we go. Um, so the first FAQ, I guess we'll call it, the first email that I got is is from Catherine G. I've been investing for the last several years, and I've made good money in the stock market, about 15% a year. But this year, my account is down over 60% and I just sold everything. So I need a new I need a new system. Does yours prevent losses, Catherine G? So, Catherine, um, welcome to the world of investing. It's not always as easy as it seems like the last few years. Things just cranked up. And, um, you know, that's because the Fed was printing all this money. I don't I don't know how deep you want to get get me to go on this answer. But, um, you know, it drove the, it drove the markets up like just tons more money sloshing around and everything went up. And then when things started to change, and they started to change back in November when the Fed said they were going to start raising rates, everybody started to freak out. And so you're not alone. A lot of people have lost a lot of money because what happened was the Fed kicked off a bear market. So they said, we're going to raise rates. That's going to slow down the economy. That's going to cause a recession. That's going to cause, um, you know, it's going to, you know, and we already had an inflation problem. So they were going to try to reverse that, but they were going to reverse it by, kind of slowing down the economy. So you just have to know that fluctuations are a part of the game. Now, you haven't really had to sit through those, but they're a part of the game. Now, you have to have a strategy for that, right? So that's that's really the key um, is that you have to have a strategy. And a lot of people, you know, they read this, uh, they read this stuff or they hear Kramer or they, you know, read Fortune and they, they hear this thing about diversification. And I can tell you, diversification does work. It just doesn't work within asset classes. So if you buy the S&P 500, which is the 500 of the biggest stocks, you know, the ones you know about Microsoft and Google and Apple and Exxon and IBM, you know, I can go on 500 stocks, you know, Coca-Cola. Um, if you do those 500 stocks, you're diversified among all the stocks. The problem is when everybody is selling everything, that diversification doesn't really help you. So in a bad market like we've just had the last seven or eight months, everything got sold off. So what good was diversification? I mean, the only thing that really didn't get sold off that much was real estate and gold, right? Every other asset class that I can think of, including the safest money out there, bonds, got sold off. So if you're going to be in assets, you might as well be in assets that are paying you, number one, and then have a little bit of a component of risk. Because if you're going to be going down anyway, you might as well be able to make money when they're going back up. So that's that's that part of it. Um, look, I gotta, I, I'll be honest. I lost money in the first half of the year too, right? You're not alone. I just didn't lose as much as most people because I was in a stock that went down 50%. And I was only down half of that for just a little while. And now we've made almost all of it back. And it's only been, you know, we're here in August, right? So we're, we're talking about the first six months of the year. And now by August, we've made all that up because we have a strategy. Our strategy is called the cash flow machine, and we make safe, reliable income. We take a stock and we sell options against it. We have a whole bunch of strategies and rules and things like that around it to limit emotions. But then, you know, that's the engine that allows us to kind of stay in the market when everybody's selling like you did. I know you sell them because you're just like you didn't want to lose more than that. And I get it. The problem is you make an emotional decision. You sell out at the bottom and then you're not there for the recovery. And not, not necessarily that every stock is going to recover. There's some stocks that are down 85, 90% that are never going to come back. So you have to kind of know which ones there are. But even in those stocks, if you do the cash flow machine strategy and you get that reliable income every, every month or every week or however you know, often you want to do it in the system, you get to kind of make up for you know, the lost time that you get on the way back. So you get to stay in the stock, you create income, and then on the way back, you're way ahead of the game because you haven't lost as much and now you're you're bouncing back because you're still in it. Um, the main thing is to use a proven strategy to stick with the strategy and don't quit. So don't do a buy and hold because that's a horrible strategy. I'm just going to buy and I'm going to hold it until whatever and it'll always be worth something later. It's not always worth something later. Um, it's, it might be worth nothing later, but it's not always. There's no guarantees in any in any investing, right? But you, if you have a proven strategy, you can look back and you can prove it with back tests and years and years of research and things like that. It doesn't always work, but the probabilities are in your favor. B 
being in this market, you want the probabilities to be in your favor. That's just the way this game is played. It's like, how much risk do you have to take for how much reward do you get? It's called asymmetric risk. If you're only going to make this much reward, but you're taking this much risk, you really got it backwards. You've got to be in the spot where you're taking a little bit of risk, but you're going to make a lot of reward, right? So that's an important thing. The other part of it is to have an income as part of your component. So and I'll close on this because I, I think I've gone on long enough for this little question, Catherine, but maybe maybe this is helpful. That is, let's say you own a house and it's, it's a house that you rent out, okay? So you have some tenants in there. You're not looking at the value of the house on Zillow every day, are you? You're just collecting your rent every month. Well, that's what we do. We collect the rent no matter what. As long as the tenant's there, we're going to get that monthly rental no matter what. The house can go up 100000 It can go down 100000 But at the end of the day, we care about that income component. That income component keeps us in that investment, and that investment continues to cash flow until the market can come around and come back because there's always some utility in that house. Now, I'm not saying there's always utility in every stock, but if you're in a good stock, then you, you're you way ahead of the game. So we have four cornerstones in our cash flow machine. We start with the right stock. That's a really critical thing. And everybody's like, what stock should I buy? It's more than that. But we start with that, the right stock in the right market. So when a market's just tanking and going down like it's done for the last eight months, it's not the right market. So it's tough. It's tough to swim upstream, you know? So we've got this, the right stock, the right market at the right spot on the chart. There's not every spot on the chart that you want to be in a stock, right? Sometimes they're going down and they're breaking down. You don't want to be in those stocks if you can help it, or you want to have some strategy that's going to help you on the downside, protect your downside. And then what we do is we collect the rent from the stocks. We squeeze the juice, we call it. We collect that rent from that stock as safe, reliable income. That'll get you through. So I'm sorry you lost money. Um, and we do have a strategy for you. If you want to reach out, we'll have a conversation with you. Um, but uh, but the bottom line is that to, to have a proven strategy, stick with it. Don't quit. And at the other end of it, if you have a good strategy, it's going to work out. All right. So thanks for that question, Catherine.